Hey guys, it's Big Bump here, uh, filling in for or guest hosting for James Hake. Um, I'm here. Uh, today's November 11th, 2022. Um, we're here to have a good time. Thanks, James. Thanks, Jesse, um, for the opportunity. And let's go. So we get right into it. Uh, first, let me make sure I say the call in line, uh, number 888-53773, 888-775-3773. So, this is a, a, a cool thing for me. It's my first time doing anything other than in the studio making music. So, work with me. And... Uh, and here we are. So um, I'm Big Bump, for those that don't know. I, um, I make music on the side of my family life. I have a wife, two kids, uh, and I don't have time to make music like I like to. For those that always ask, I don't mind you guys asking, but the 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 uh, what's the word? The the realization is I don't have time. I when I do make music, I record in my studio. My studio is my my closet. So and I'm the worst engineer um, at producing my own music. Um, so, I'm going to get into a couple stories that I'm interested in. Uh, one would be the mess going on in Arizona with the delay until after the weekend. Um, the one big thing with all this is I have no idea how, in America, we have a problem with elections. It shouldn't be. We're not in the third world country. Third world countries have it. They can, as corrupt as some of them are, they can have elections uh, counted by end of day, and you'll know end of day the next morning. Right or wrong, they just do it. Um, that shouldn't be the case. We uh speak from the chest. From the chest? That's not from the chest? Okay, Jesse says speak from the chest. I thought I was speaking from the chest. Oh man, what the You ain't talking to your wife? Right. <laughs> she wouldn't want to hear it. Anyway. Yeah. So uh I hope this is better. Um yeah, we uh there's definitely a problem with the election 
with our elections or selections. Um, so that's the main point I wanted to make about uh, the, the election process, that we definitely shouldn't be having issues knowing when our elected officials are elected. Okay, so I'm trying to dust off the, the rust. I haven't even recorded music in maybe half the year, this past year, maybe one time. So even me in front of the mic is awkward sometimes, but it's all good. Um, let me check Super Chat, uh, not Super Chats, what is this called? The chat. Oh, so um, let me be more specific or more clear who I am. Um, again, Big Bump. I attend Bond um, church services. Not as much as usual. My daughter just started working, so it's the Sundays are a little tough for me to get here to pick her up and take her. Um, but I, I do attend from time to time. I try to make the men's conferences. I don't, I'm in the LA County area, but traffic is LA. Uh, that seven o'clock hour is horrible. I have to leave four o'clock to get here on time, which is crazy for those that know. Um, for those that don't know, it's crazy. Uh, I, again, I'm a, family man to the core. I'm a man, first and foremost. Uh, and I love God with all my heart, soul, and might. And, and I don't know what else to say. I don't, I don't usually like to even speak about myself. So um, that's why I was short in the beginning. Um, morning, Hake. Morning, Joel. Uh, uh <laughs> this is funny. Okay, so, um, I just wanted to talk about something else real quick. Um, it's time, time, time. Yeah. <laughs> so. Things going on in the world. We uh, we live in we're living in some amazing times. Actually, it can be crazy. People acting crazy. The world is insane. But you have to you know keep your head on because you'll fall right into it if you don't. Um, the the evil that's out there is, is, well, I, okay, I'll give you a story. And it's on being possessed. So I'm in the, this was a couple weeks ago, maybe a month ago, I was in the post office and this affected me. This, this was me that I seen, I seen this. I'm in the post office and waiting in line to, to drop my package off. And I see a, a gentleman comes in, he's white, and he walks past and he has a pro-life shirt on. And I see that it's pro-life, but something, and I know what it is, something is saying, that says pro-choice, that says pro-choice. And I'm laughing, like, what's going on? I know it says pro-life, I see that. I see it says pro-life. He does what he has to do. He walks back out. The lady behind me says, I love your shirt. And I'm like, you guys are weird. But I see that the devil was trying to possess me into thinking that that, that pro-life shirt said pro-choice. It was so weird to me. I, I seen it and I knew it didn't say pro-choice, but the devil was trying to tell me that 
that says pro-choice. That shirt says pro-choice. And it hit me immediately, but, and I let it go, but it was just, it was just weird to me. Just the weirdest thing to me. Um, and the point being is you will, in the world, you will be confronted with that. This is devil's playground, they say. And, and he, he does whatever he wants to do. And you have to, to know that the, the difference between being in the world and not of it. And, and, and just, just knowing that was, uh, and being aware of what was going on, I realized that it was Satan playing, trying to play a trick on me. So I understand where people, that, that almost gave me a, you know, a definitive that people are surely possessed when they, they go out and make, you know, the, the guy from Florida that, uh, was talked about, um, Nicholas Cruz, that, excuse me, that he was hearing things. That's true. He was. He definitely was. And uh, that was evil in his head. That was Satan in his head. And he was being possessed. There's no doubt about it. Jeffrey Dahmer. I don't watch anything. Uh, I have family that uh, was that... On the other side of my family, they have a specific person involved in that um, Jeffrey Dahmer situation. So I, I don't know it, much about it, but I do know that Jeffrey Dahmer was possessed. Everyone is possessed. You're either possessed by good or evil. Uh, whoever it might be, the cashier at the store my wife, my kids, they're possessed in one way or another. Possessed by God or you're possessed by Satan. Um, and those that are not aware fall right into it. They'll fall into the, the being possessed by evil without a doubt. Um, so that, that's, that's something that I had to bring up because it's real. Um, next thing, I just seen something on the screen. It is about, I'll lighten up a little bit, climate change. Um, if you have the um, so these people are weird. This is, this is a, hey, it's possession again. So the, the, it reads that uh, the actor Rain Wilson has changed his name to Rain. Rain Wilson is, a, is an actor. Uh, he played in quite a few movies. He's best known for David Schrute, uh, Dwight Schrute in The Office. Funny show. I like it. Uh, but he's weird in real life. Almost like the character as well. Uh, Rain Wilson, the actor, has changed his name to Rainfall Heat Wave Extreme Winter Wilson in a bid to raise awareness about the risk of the melting Arctic. <laughs> Weird, but it makes sense. People that are possessed, they do things like this. Um, so in the... In the article, it's from Daily Mail. Um, Dwight Howard, uh, Dwight Howard, Dwight Schrute, 56-year-old actor, has changed his moniker on social media as part of the role as an Arctic base camp board member in the bid to raise awareness about the risk of the melting Arctic as world leaders are arriving at, uh, I think they call it COP27, 
maybe COP, I, I don't recall. It's the climate change. They have it yearly. Um, this year it's in Egypt. Each year it's uh, in a different country. I think 95 was the first time. Um, and these people are, are losing their minds over thinking that we're going to disappear off the face of the earth because of the weather. Even though Earth's been around for years and years and years, the climate change, oh, good point. Rain Wilson was an unhinged Trump hater. Thank you, thank you for that, Nick. Unhinged, evil, possessed. Um, that, um, I forgot my point by reading that. Uh, oh, that they have this every year since 95. I think one time was 2020, of course. Uh, that there wasn't a cop. Um, but he's serious, dead serious about this. This is not a joke. I'm, I'm going back to Rain Wilson or Rain, wall, water, flower, whatever. Um, I'm as serious as the melting Arctic, which amplifies global risk in including extreme weather events around the world. Okay, so. <laughs> This is weird to me because, again, like I was saying, now I remember my point that these people really believe that we're going to just destroy the earth. The earth is going to, uh, no more humans here. They, they love death, but they're, they fear the earth, the uh, people disappearing off the earth, the water, the Arctic flooding or the Antarctic flooding or whatever their, their nonsense is. And, uh, and, of course, he's being uh, led by a female. Uh, let me find her name. Her name is, uh, she's on the board of, oh, some professor named Gail Whiteman, founder of the Arctic Bates Camp and professor of sustainable at the University of Exeter Business School. So following her, he's going to be insane also. So my other point with that is, there's so many, uh, not so many, there's a few uh, real characteristics of, of what happens when things on Earth that, and outside of Earth in space that actually would cause the, the, the weather, the climate. One thing is underwater volcanoes. Though you... No one knows all the, the number of uh, underwater volcanoes. So no one, not no one. Generally speaking, people do not talk about underwater volcanoes when speaking of climate change. It emits uh, gases just like, and natural gases, of course, that that dim earth that cause the climate to react in the way it does. So the, that's one thing. The next thing, of course, I know for sure that the sun is probably the biggest factor of weather and climate, period. Volcanoes on earth, that would be, but the sun would be the biggest factor. And that's another thing people tend not to realize. It's, they say, humans, humans as human, that anthropogenic. Um, there's another article that uh, I came across, uh, Natural News, it says underwater volcano eruption caused global dimming that deprived crops of sunlight, more famine, starvation to come. Um, and that was from January with the South Pacific um, Volcano eruption. Uh, I don't know that that South Pacific name, Pacific type, Hunga, Tonga, Hunga. Um, it sent massive ash plumes uh, that I guess reached hundreds of thousands of miles, uh, not miles, sorry, excuse me, not miles, feet uh, into the atmosphere. And that, that had never happened before. So, 
the point with that that I'm making is unhinged people tend to uh, tend to believe, do, and say unhinged things. Uh, and to me, it makes sense. If you, you, you're possessed, you're going to do good or evil. You're not going to actually realize that there are factors that you have no idea about or omit those factors that you have no idea about. Um, yes, and according to the New York Times, January 15th, uh, that eruption was the largest in decades. And again, it did, it did reach the mesosphere. I think that's what it is. That's the highest that any volc excuse me, volcano activity ever reached. So I'm just saying that to say that people freak out. And they always want to tax this or tax that. They can hey, tax the volcanoes. They want to tax your carbon, the carbon emissions. We're carbon-based forms, life forms. They're basically saying they want you dead. Uh, but again, evil will do evil things. They'll say evil things, and they're they react in evil ways. So with that being said, I am phone lines. Again, I'm going to go to the phone lines right now. The call in number is 888-775-3773. Call in, talk to me, whatever's on your mind. I'm going to quote James, uh, Lucy Goosey, <laughs> that's funny to me. I always tease him and we joke about that. So um, first caller I'm going to go to is Rick in Maine. Rick in Maine, one or two, sorry. The top button, right? OK. Hold on, guys. Let me uh, try to figure this thing out. OK. Rick and Maine? No. Hold on. Try this. Try that, my bad. <laughs> Hello? This is, oh, this is not Rick and Maine. Is this Richard from North Carolina? North Carolina. Hey, how's, how are you doing, Richard? What's up, Bob? Not much. How are you doing, man. Bob? I'm doing well. You all right if I call you Bob? That, that's fine. Uh, that's yeah, how fine. you doing today, Bob? Uh, nice to have you on the show. Oh, thanks. I appreciate that. How's it yeah, going? Yeah, you're doing good. Hey, um, oh, cool. so what I wanted, and this is all, I just want to make it clear first, this is all my own opinion. This is not anything with Hake or Jesse. Uh, I wanted to talk about what's going on in Arizona, if that's okay. Yeah, please do. Okay. So I'm from North Carolina, and we have about the same amount of voters that came in, and they got it down before midnight in our county. So I don't okay. know. I mean, do they have to have the Sesame Street people come in there and go, one, two, <laughs> you know? You know what I mean? Right, right, right. I got you. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, what do you think is going on? <laughs> um, it's, to me, it's, it's a lot of tomfoolery. It's a lot of mess going on. That, you know, do, do you think they're trying to find Democrat votes? Yes, I, I. That's my opinion. I do believe that. Okay. Whether that's the case or not, I don't know for sure. Of course, I don't know for sure. But based on sure. on on you know how things are going, I can see that there are shenanigans going on. So you think you think they're going to find a way to make sure Kerry doesn't win? That I don't know. Um, well, they need Kerry in Arizona. They need her. They need her. That's for sure. Um, yeah. She's that. I'll go on the limb, of course. I don't, I'm not with the females being in office. But at the time we're in right now, 
that's the only choice we have. That's, I mean, yeah. There's no way. It's, it's, I was going to say, it's, there's it's no the way that, know, right? that uh, Katie Hobbs should be <laughs> well, the governor of that Katie that Hobbs state. being the, the, the secretary of state right, right. now is conflictual. Yeah. They, that, she should, she should, she should, um, what, step down or, 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 or what do you call that when you, when you don't want to be involved when you opt out? Recuse, recuse yourself? That? Yeah, she should recuse, recuse herself from that, from that role. I agree. I and anybody that. that she hired should be recused too. They should bring in new people. Yeah, yeah, that, that are not involved with her. There's definitely no election integrity there. At yeah. All. Oh no, no, at all. No, I don't understand that. I mean, and when I don't know how old you are, Bob. I'm 46. I'm right. When there I was with a you. kid, <laughs> when I was a kid, I yeah. we'd know by midnight. Right. By yeah. the time, by the time, you know what the control was. Yeah, definitely. I agree with that. You I know? I recall that as well. Um, I, there was no, and it's like a new phenomena almost when that, that 2000 election that it's like, or 99 when, whatever it was, 2000, that that's seemed like that's when everything began to me. Oh, you mean with, with, uh, the hanging Chad? The hanging Chad thing. Yeah. That, yeah. that was like the first but time But do you think I that was it. the Democrats first attempt to try to screw with the election? Mm, when? Are you are you okay. asking me a question? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was wondering if you think that was the first time the Democrats oh, proved got the election you. was a disaster. Um, at the time, I thought it was more at that was my pre political mindset, and I wasn't really into anything until after nine eleven. Mm-hmm. Uh, I because I was. A Democrat then, I guess you could say. I didn't vote, I don't think, then. But I looked at it as the the, the Republicans that it was Bush, you know. I did hear yeah, certain I didn't, things. Yeah, I didn't vote but, back then. Yeah, right, right. I think I voted one time in 98 was the first time I voted. Gotcha. So, were, you how, were you, how old were you then? Did you just turn 18? I was, no, no. I was 98. I was going on 20. Okay. Yeah. What, what, so you registered, you went down there and registered, so you're going to vote, gosh darn it? Yeah. And I don't know why. I voted for, uh, it was a basketball player at the time here. Um, oh. <laughs> and were, you in Cal- were you in California? Yeah. Yeah, I think it was Bradley. Oh, okay. Bill Bradley. Okay. I think that's who yeah. it was. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, yeah. That was that. So I didn't, I really didn't. I didn't know much at the time. I was young. Why? Well, I, I, you know, you know who my first hero was, or my first person that wo- uh, that that woke me up to the right. It was Herman King. Oh, okay, right. I'm a, I'm white, and yeah. I thought if a black man can do this <laughs> and be successful, then as a white person, I shouldn't have any problems either. Right. And it's not about race then. <laughs> yeah. Herman King taught taught me him succeeding taught me it's not about race. Right. Right on. Yeah, it's about your ability to do go out and do and have the have the ability to to not let people stop you. Yeah, and that, that's had I heard that at a, at an earlier age, I would have uh, gravitated to that as well. Um, yeah, I I was in the South most of my life, so oh, what part? Uh, in Florida, North Florida, okay. Jackson, Jacksonville. What do you actually. think about DeSantis? I mean, I like DeSantis. Um, there's certain things I don't like about him, um, mm-hmm. but at the moment, he's good for Florida. That's mm-hmm. all I can say about it. I don't know. That's it. I mean, I, what do you think about the 1.5 million? The 1.5 million. I'm, yeah, at margin. Oh, that to me it makes sense. Of course, a lot of people migrating to Florida even makes more sense that those people, you know, they got in time to. To get on the yeah. voter ballot, I think polls. I think everybody that moved to my county um, were the ones. I think the ones that moved to Florida obviously skipped my county in North Carolina, <laughs> and all the bad ones moved to, to my county because our our county is just like woke. Yeah, as heck. Oh. oh, it's disgusting. What uh, what county are you in? Well, Wake County. We call it Woke County. Oh, <laughs> okay. Because we have these common sense Republicans and independents, okay. and no one voted for them. Really. Yeah. Hmm. 
Bo Hines. Bo Hines was one of our guys. Oh, okay. I'm familiar with that name. Yeah, and even Johnson voted against them. And Johnson's supposed to be right next to us. Johnson's supposed to be red. And I told and I told my friend in the RNC, he says, maybe you should take a closer look at, at Johnson. Maybe it's not as red as you think it is. Because hmm. yeah. he got his butt kicked in Johnson County. Yeah, it was that bad? Oh, yeah, Wiley yeah. Nickel got in. He's a diehard Democrat. Uh, I mean, we were, okay. They were all talking about Johnson County was deep red. What? Okay. It's purple or light blue now. <laughs> so it's like... <laughs> Like Pelosi winning, yeah, Pelosi almost ninety percent. Yeah, yeah. That that should have that should have been a win at least in Johnson County. <laughs> wow, ninety percent should have voted for Bo, and he got like I think he got like forty. Yeah, he got his yeah. butt. He got his butt wiped. Whipped. I'm sorry. Right, I got you. White. I got you. <laughs> White too, probably. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it's sad, and 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 and, and I'm not anti-Trump. But I, I think some of what Trump did with Oz was a mistake. You know, I mean, Oz I had no it. political yeah. experience. Yeah. And 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 well, I like Walker, but Herschel's got a lot of issues too. You know that? Uh, yeah, but there's no denying Walker above Warnock. Oh yeah, Warnock. of course. It, of course, I would. I would have to vote for Herschel too if I was in Georgia. Yeah. Yeah, that's a that's a no brainer. Yeah, but but Fetterman, good night. That's why every time I talk to my conservative friends, I yeah. answer the they answer the phone. I say good night, and they laugh. <laughs> yeah, he needs he needs help. It, it's it's not sad. I'm not going to say it's sad to see him there, but he needs help. He, he doesn't need to be running. No, he should not even been up problem. for the primary. Yeah, I mean they knew about that before the primary vote, but they right. kept the they kept the voters out of the loop. Yeah, yeah. That shouldn't even That's be the, the case. That's yeah. I mean, you got Biden 2.0. Now they're talking about how Fetterman should be president. I've seen that. I've seen that last night. I think I came across that. Is, is, this, is this the Democratic Party today, uh, the, the dementia, and, and, and why? It's, you know what it is? Um, I'm going to let you go, Richard. You know what it is? It's, it's significant of what's going on in the country. You have people like Biden and Fetterman. They're like, it's synonymous of how the country is going. You get yeah, what I'm down saying? the toilet. Down the down the drain. But Richard, I'm gonna let you go. I appreciate you good talking okay. to you, man. Take care, Bob. All right, you as well. See you again. Yeah, right on. All right. All right. Mm -hmm. All right. Bye bye. So, um, yeah, the elections. This our election process is out of whack right now. Um, I'm gonna go back to. I'm gonna go to. Sorry, Rick. Rick in Maine. Rick in Maine. You there? Hey, Bum. Hey, Good how to you meet doing, you. Rick? Nice to meet you, too. How's it going? All right. Well, we're not doing too bad today. Yeah. You on the road? I am headed to work, yep. Headed to work? Uh, yep. What's your, what's your yep. day looking like? Uh, not too bad so far. Okay. Um, I'll be back. I, uh, whoops. Uh, I'm in the line here. I get out of the line. Uh, no, I wanted to, uh, first off, welcome you to uh, Mr. Hake's show there. Thank you. To, Thank uh, you. see it's still going. Yeah. And uh, it down doing for a good job there so far, bud. <laughs> oh, thanks. I appreciate it. Again, it's <laughs> odd right. for me, but, hey, hey, you go through it. It, it won't be an issue next time at all. <laughs> I won't have any stumbles. <laughs> And I won't there skip you, you know. if you're first in line on <laughs> online to, to, to call in. So sorry about <laughs> that. <laughs> ah, no problem, man. No yeah. problem. So what's your what you said you wanna talk about Veterans Day? Yeah. Uh, comment? I wanna wish uh everyone out there uh that's a veteran and thank you for your service. I'm a veteran also. Right, right on. So I uh I Try to stay home on this day, but I yeah. had to go out according to the schedule. Yeah. And but uh, it's uh, not a bad day up here today. What's the weather it's, like? Uh, cloudy. Got, uh, I'm going to say probably 55 degrees. Nice okay. day. Yeah. I'm not a and, fan uh, of the clouds and all that watery, rainy look. That 
That's a turnoff. We had some weather like that a couple days ago. Oh, man. I, I'm not a fan of that at all. I don't – cold weather, that, I'm black, so I love warm. I love the heat. And I hear you. <laughs> I hear you. Um, you'll have to come up to Maine there sometime in the summer there. Yeah, Check that would be the only time I would make it there. <laughs> <laughs> that way. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm glad you brought up the Veterans Day thing. I want to definitely shout out to my father. He's a veteran. Uh, he was in the Navy. Uh, I don't remember the years, but I'll see him this weekend for sure. Get to hang out with him. Oh, yeah. Right on. Uh, so happy Veterans Day to service. everyone out there. Yeah, thank you guys. Um, anything else, Rick? Um, not that I can think of right now, Bum. Yeah. But uh, I like the... Uh, the tunes that you've been doing too, I I'm uh, enjoying those. Thank you. The Jesse Show and some yeah. of the uh, some of the other uh, cool. music there that you've done. Thank you. I so. appreciate that. I I wish I can do more music, but I have a, a little little one also, and she's oh man, oh she's she's everywhere all the time. So <laughs> I just don't have time. I like to hang out with her, hang out with my oldest daughter when she's not working oh, or yeah. at school. So. Definitely. Yeah, and Definitely. I, I'll be too loud recording in my, my closet, so I don't even do it unless <laughs> I have to. Unless someone says, hey, I need you in there right now. Give me this <laughs> music. <laughs> but, Family yeah. first, man. Yeah. Family first. Yeah, they have to be in place. I have to have them in order. So house has to be in order. But, uh, I'll take care. Yeah, God you bless. as well, Rick. Good Thank to you. Hear. Good to hear and, and to see you. Yeah, right on. Nice talking to you, Rick. All right, buddy. All Take right. care. You, Be careful. You too. God bless. All right. All right. So. Ah, cool. All right. So, um, again, hey, call in, guys. 888-775-3773. I don't bite. Um, I got a little bit before break. So let me get into something else I wanted to talk about. Um, and it's my main man, Alex Jones. They hate Alex Jones. They hate, 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 hate Alex Jones, which means that he's doing something right. Um, they want to take him for everything. They want to in his free speech, in his platform, in his ability to make a living, uh, everything. And it's, it's insane how they're coming after him. And it's the, uh, this last night, I, I actually was watching him at the time, not last night, but during the daytime, uh, the afternoon, I seen when it came in that, um, the judge respond. Uh, the judge um, for the Connecticut portion of the trial added an additional four hundred and seventy-three million dollars to his judgment, um, and and it's a it's 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 a warning. It's a warning shot to to free speech and to to people that think for themselves that are not afraid to go against the establishment, the global agenda, uh, the communist takeover. It, it's a way to, to, to shut you down and, and definitely get rid of free speech at bare minimum. Um, so, I'll just read a little bit off of, uh, this is from the actual InfoWars site. Um, his lawyer is saying uh, uh, the cases aren't about financial recovery at this point. He, he's never going to, basically never going to be able to to make anything. They seized his assets, I think. That's what they did also yesterday. Uh, I think that followed up the, ne the next article I seen. Um, and he even says, uh, Norm Pattis is his lawyer, his attorney in that case. Uh, I think the goal is to pile you up with a judgment debt, the likes of which no one has ever seen, which is the case. It's almost uh, $1.5 billion that Alex 
is has been ordered to to pay to the families of Sandy Hook. Um, and that's the case that is based around him saying that he felt that at the moment that there was a lot of screwiness going around, there were a lot of a lot of things going on with Sandy Hook at the time that um, that would have you question it, rightfully so. Why can you not question anything? Everything should be uh, questioned. Um, if you don't know, you don't know. Question it. What's wrong with questioning it? I see nothing wrong with that. And we have a First Amendment. That's the reason for it. The founders made that, and that's what it is. Um, I'll go on with, uh, he also says, no private person or non-corporation, and then, uh, sorry, let me let me start that over. I think the goal is to pile you up with the, and he's speaking to, to Alex, I think the goal is to pile you up with a judgment debt the likes of which no one else has ever seen, no private person or non-corporation, and then see what you can do to squirrel out of it. I think they'd like to put you on a financial leash with an aim of silencing you. Silencing you. And that's what's happening. Um, just like with uh, Ye, um, there's someone else that came across my mind besides Kyrie Irving. Um, oh, Andrew Tate. Uh, he's a what's that, MMA type Thai um, Muay Thai fighter that they went after him for you know speaking about females, so he can speak about females. They they just want to shut down anyone's free speech um, and make you and and make you look bad, come at you. It's a thing that I I've learned uh, called struggle sessions. This happened uh, specifically struggle sessions, the word, uh, I guess, in China when Mao was in power, that it's a, a way of, to humiliate someone, uh, throw them in front of people, you know, have people judge them, just say whatever things to them, uh, convicted of, you know, it could be murder or they just did something wrong culturally or and they just parade them around town and, and, and you know, degrade them degrade him, talk bad about him. And that's what's going on right now. You speak out against anything, they're gonna make you the pit of the pit. You're gonna be the dirtiest thing around. Um, and especially if it doesn't follow their narrative, that, that. Uh, what's the word? If it's not a leftist, Communist, Marxist, globalist, elitist um, talk. You'll uh, you'll get you'll get lumped in there, and especially if they feel you did something wrong, wrong. They just know you did something, and they'll just pile on. No one knows why they're even piling on there again. Evil does what evil does. You can't can't be surprised by that. Um, but I wanted to make the point of that that. Uh, Free speech is under attack without a doubt. Um, if you can't on your own your own say, hey, check this movie out, just just look at it. They're gonna come after you. If it doesn't float their boat, they're gonna come right after you. Um, i.e. Kyrie Irving. Um, you say uh the Jews run the media, they're gonna come after you. You have a, you say, hey, that shooting looks suspicious. It didn't, doesn't, that's not how things typically go. They're gonna come after you. And then, and they're gonna attack you again. Is they may not be or they may not have went through a trial and been a jury a jury trial and been convicted of anything, but it's still gonna you're still gonna go through that sh those struggle sessions. You're gonna be pointed at, name call, um, talked about, ridiculed. They want to shut you up. They want to shut you down. So, just wanted to make the point of that also. And uh, my point with the Alex Jones thing is. 
the First Amendment is definitely under attack. We'll go to the phone lines. Um, Gabe from Michigan, welcome to the Hate Report. Hey, Big Bun. How's it going, Gabe? Good, how are you? I'm doing well, man. How are you? Not bad. Yeah. I had a qu quick comment to make on that when you first started off the the show about that, you know, kind of that <laughs> possession of uh, hearing that voice, so to speak, and actually seeing something. Yeah. That wasn't the reality of things. Right. It was weird. It was I, weird. It was the weirdest thing. I can kind of attest to it. It was uh, just, I, I woke up, went to go my daily morning routine, and uh, I I hear myself saying something. Mm -hmm. And that was the first time that I realized it is. It's, it sounds just like me. Right. <laughs> it acts like me, but right. I know it's not me. Exactly. Exactly. It, it was the strangest thing ever. I couldn't, and I'm like, man, it's it sounds me. It mm -hmm. sounds exactly, it acts, but I know it's not me. It's not even a part of me. Right. It's it's taken, it's not taking a foothold, but it's it's there. It's yeah. in the same. Yeah. It's in the same room. It it's right there with you, and it, the crazy. Yeah. It's always there. It's always there, and and you just you're when as soon as you're aware of it, you know. But it's always there. Yep. Yeah, but yep. uh yeah, it's it's the craziest thing, man. That was one of the it, it 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 was just one of the the weirdest and strangest things. I get it, but it was still weird. <laughs> That's all I wanted to say, man. You uh, have a, a blessed day. Hey, thank you, Gabe. I appreciate it. You as well. All right. Take Bye. care. You too. Bye. Bye. Oh, yeah. So yeah, man, that That I'm telling you that that post office situation it was so crazy to me. I thinking about it now because I, I kind of like I said I I saw it it happened and I was like whatever yeah I'm not gonna let it bother me I can't let it bother me but remembering that that did happen and talking about it is crazy. It was one of the craziest things. And I've done crazy things in my life also. And, um, but that is right up there with, um, with, with anything I've done ever or had happened to me. Um, go back to the phone lines. Uh, Josh in Georgia. Welcome to the show, Josh. Hey, report. Hey, Big Bone. What's going on, man? Uh, hey, I'm here. I'm living. Yes, sir. <laughs> How you doing? <laughs> I'm doing fine, man. Doing uh -huh. fine. Uh, uh -huh. Just uh, I, I, I just enjoying the show, man. And yeah, cool. uh, <laughs> cool. I was, I was well. Were you about to say something? Or? No, no, no. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Yeah, I was. Well, I was just going to comment about um. Ever since you heard that that well, there was a guy in church who talks about his son a lot, <laughs> and um, yeah. he he rambles yeah. a lot, and yeah. I noticed that about myself. Like I'm just uh -huh. like that guy. That like I I can like start talking cool. and uh, kind of go on conscience. Yeah. When uh, and I see the annoyance in people's face, you know, they're like, "Josh, mm -hmm. shut up!" Right, right. So it's like, <laughs> so is that is that is that how it feels on this show? It's like you kind of want to like talk and like, yeah, be, talk. It's better to talk slow than to talk fast, right? Right. Uh, that I see it that way also because I'm yeah. not a big talker. I'm not at all. Right. I'm always low key. Um, so exactly. I don't talk much, and sometimes when I do, I catch myself you know, explaining way too much, way too much. Um, right. So, um, and and I know I'm explaining too much. I can see I sometimes I'll maybe repeat something, which, you know, that's normal. People do repeat things, but I see that right. that's a, that's something I, I have to pay attention to so people don't look at me like, what are you talking about? Even if they do, it's cool, but I know what you mean by people look at you like, hey, won't you shut up? That's enough. <laughs> <laughs> um, right, because that's a, it's it's like 
it's definitely the mama spirit in me because my mom gets on the phone and she talks forever, you know. Really? And yeah, yeah, yeah. That that uh, that'll do it for sure. That'll, <laughs> <laughs> that'll do it, man. Um, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. You just have no, again. It, you have to stay mindful, right? Yeah, right. So be aware. And it's, it's, it's like when I listen to Hake on the Hake, you know, he kind of rambles, but it, it's yeah. entertaining to listen to right. him because yeah. he's kind of like. <laughs> He does. He can go, I don't know. go on. Right. I like it. I, I like his his style. Can, yeah. He has a different, he has a unique, yeah. him and Nick. They both have yeah. like unique Definitely. mindset. You uh-huh. know? Yeah. And uh, yeah. Yeah. They, they definitely do when it works for them. And uh, yep. And it's cool to see that. It, it'll, so I was going to say, and in, in me doing it, I like this, I have to, I have to watch myself not being, you know, short on words because it's a talk show. Right. You know, it's on the radio. You I have exactly. to say something. So I have to find that <laughs> in weird. to say something. Yeah, it's crazy to me. I can go I can <laughs> have my wife and kids in the same room. Somebody may joke, but you know, we may mess around or whatever, but I'm not gonna say much at all. Uh, I'm just sit there right. and watch and, you know, play around and right. you know, but I'm not gonna say much until something's brought up to me or something funny or you know i i tend not right. to say much anyway so it it is something to say something know when to say something and know when to shut up you know right yeah so right yeah it's like you want to be polite kind of or uh, you want to uh i found the spot where not to be polite anymore just yeah do what you do, it's probably but, best not to yeah, right. yeah don't be polite just do what you're gonna do um they're gonna react the way they want to react anyway so Right. Um, right. Yeah. So just go about it how it comes, you know. Uh, yeah. 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 Because that that it's like that thing in me will like take over if I kind of get too comfortable mm-hmm. in talking, and uh, you know, you end up kind of like rambling. Yeah. But, uh, you definitely will. Yeah. <laughs> it happens. <Yeah. laughs> I know it happens. I'm with you. It will happen. But you just have to again be aware of it. Um, go through it so when the next time it happens hey I'm, it's I'm, awareness yeah, yeah just watch yeah. it yeah. yeah yeah right on right on Josh hey anything yes, else sir. before I let you go yeah no I don't want to hold you this is you know uh, that's all I had man okay cool thanks for the call yeah. Josh I appreciate it okay man. no right. problem man thank you all right all right bro. Bye. bye okay so again call in 888-775-3773. Bring up anything you want to talk about. Uh, again, you hear, I have to silence the dead air. Um, so I have to, to make sure I have something to, to say. Uh, give me one second. Uh, uh, Whenever. Uh, Sorry, guys. You really can't um, multitask. You can't. I don't know. There's no way. That's not a real thing. Okay. Oh, okay. All right. Ah, uh, okay. Thanks, Nick. Uh, let me take a look at these, uh, these, the chat. Um, <laughs> yeah, this, uh, I see you guys, you have to go on in this position. Uh, and with, if it continues, then, you know, if I keep doing it, then of course uh, I'll definitely find a way to be better at it. Um, you know, so before the break, I want to uh, preface that I'll be uh, next the next hour. I wanted to talk about uh, Nick brought it up about a, it was just a little bit over a week ago about, and I'm a, I play sports, so I'm bringing up the 
uh, baseball specifically, that uh, CNN had reported that baseball has a diversity problem. There's definitely reasons why baseball has a diversity problem. And the reasons CNN gives and other people give are not the reasons. They're not the reasons. Um, um, I mean, yeah, so I'll, I'm going to touch on that when I get back from the break. So we have a, a question on YouTube from Osmosis Jones. How did you find Alex Jones? So I was never was aware of him. I had no idea about Alex Jones um, until 9-11. Because um, the one thing that put me on this to to question things was I seen Danny Glover ask a question about 9-11 or something in that realm of 9-11 in the war that people were freaking out. Oh, why he asked? You can't ask that. I was like, hold on. Why can't he say that? And at that time, I was in that realm of Democrat or leftist. Like, why can't he ask that? And in the not pro black, but I was black. I was, I was doing doing a lot of things, um, and it just baffled my mind. So I'm going to research, I'm just looking up uh, 9/11. What happened? What really happened? Just lead me to certain people, different individuals, and then I come across that first he did a uh, one of his documentaries was on that. I guess it came out a few months after he laid out all the the. Um, the anomalies and facts about 9-11. And I was in 02, towards the end of 02, like really December, January of 02, going into 03. And uh, that was my my um, introduction to Alex Jones. And since then, uh, I've always watched him uh, pretty much daily. Uh, he had a 9-11 symposium I was talking to Nick about this. Uh, it was in, I don't, it was in either 05 or 06 here in Los Angeles, downtown LA. He had a 9-11 symposium back in 05, 06, and I, I attended, I was following him from then, those three, four years, and one of the best uh, conferences I had gone to at the time. Uh, and, you know, it's been almost, it'll be, probably 20 years since I've uh, been listening or found Alex Jones. So that's just a brief thing on that. Um, so I hope that answered your question, Osmosis Jones. Um, all right, so it is the hours up. Uh, I will return after a short break again. Uh, call in 888 775 If you want to talk, shoot the breeze real quick with me. Um, and, and, you know, just chop it up. It's Friday. I'm off today. Um, uh, shout out to Hake. Um, I appreciate him. I appreciate Jesse for giving me the opportunity today. And uh, we'll be back. We just want to be left alone, don't make me practice what I preach. I, I can show you, I can tell you, I just want to be free. free. But you keep infringing on my God given, I just want to live in peace. Live in peace. Don't, don't tread on me, you keep me. Straight in and I won't cave into your doctrination. And I'm not a slave, I'm not masquerading, I'm not vaccinating, I'm running out of pace. I'm not with the games, not even PlayStation. You trying to scare the nation with your variation. Mass manipulation, see a correlation. Protect my name, safe to put in the lamest. It's we the people versus.
versus everybody. We a legion, the silent majority. The global elite want us under surveillance. The RC and I got you living in danger. Look, you're either Neo or an agent. Better yet, either Goliath or David can't serve two masters. God or Satan, red or blue pill reality, oasis. United with stand is the only option. Live free or die, so proceed with caution. Pew pew life, made me a marksman. Muzzle my one day, I'ma see over the target. It's time to put the sunglasses on. Cause I'm all out of bubble gum. Our situation is a type one. What you gonna do? Spider run. The time is gone. For we are legion. Cause we are legion. 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 For we are legion. Hello, hello, hello out there. Uh, I'm back, big bump, filling in for James Hake in the Hake Report. Um, I hope you guys are still rocking with me. Um, remember, call in, make it a little simpler for me. Um, I don't want to sound like I'm babbling, but whatever, I'll make it work. Um, Hassan, I want to ask you, Put you in the spotlight real quick. Would, yes, uh, sir. Would any anything that you that you want to say from you know me being here and anything that caught your attention, your that I've been talking about? Absolutely, man. Just first of all, great job. Oh, thanks, man. Welcome to the to the hot seat. And, yeah, and you're handling it well. <laughs> it's hot. <laughs> It's amazing how fast the time goes by, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm, uh, I'm noticing that too. Yeah. Yeah. You just, you just in it. You're in the, you're in the fire. Yeah. Um. There was a couple of things that you said that I thought was interesting. Um. I don't know. I mean, I'm a huge Alex Jones fan as well. Um. And I remember. I guess it was probably 2020. It was probably during everything the height of it felt like the height of politics the height of the you know the chinese virus everything right. at one time and i was yeah watching them daily right yeah. and i think it was getting to the point where i just was like I, I, you know it was overwhelming <laughs> because i i felt like how he feels i feel like i'm always worried that he's gonna like he always jokes around, like, I'm going to have a heart attack, you know. Right, yeah. Uh, yeah uh, that's uh, something. Joe, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> and I felt like that. And it was so funny because that was right around the time that I found Jesse. Yeah, I and remember, yeah. And I was okay. so glad because I felt like Alex had all this stuff that I wanted to hear about, uh -huh. but there was, like, no solution. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I get and it. And I just was like, <laughs> man, this is, like, not yeah. healthy for me, right. you know. So, um, but anyway, but I'm saying all that to say that that's very interesting that um, that it's been a 20 year journey for you and uh, right after 9/11 and yeah. I know that was kind of when he also snuck into Bohemian Grove. Right. And prior to that, yeah, yeah. But I got, I got. Just, yeah, and it's funny that you mentioned Danny Glover because okay. right isn't that yeah, who you mentioned? Yeah, I mentioned Danny Glover. Yeah. So I I believe Alex mentioned that he saw Danny Glover at Bohemian Grove. Huh. I don't know if I, I heard that, but I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah. I would not be surprised. But anyway, yeah, so that was interesting um, that you brought up. And then, I mean, I don't know how much you want to talk about it because I know you said you didn't really watch anything or really want to talk too much about it, but you mentioned the Jeffrey Dahmer thing. Oh, okay. Go ahead. And um, 
So yeah, so I don't know. I watched that uh, whole okay mini series. That was pretty intense. Yeah, I imagine. Um, but yeah, I don't know how much you you wanted to talk about that. But so you're saying okay. someone that you yeah <laughs> wow have, yeah um in like, Milwaukee uh um yeah I have a close 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 very close uh family member that that was there. First or second cousin, one of the one of the guys. Wow, that was uh, that was murdered. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it's yeah. It's definitely something else. It's um, but you're right about being possessed and just. I mean, it's it is something else. Like even a couple of days ago, when Joel was here, he showed a story about the kid, the Parkland kid. That, exactly. That's what I was referencing. Yeah, yeah, and it's it's just amazing. Like mm-hmm. to even in that video, you see the kid trying to tell the right the, the police <laughs> officer, the detective. detective he's like, yeah. something's going on. Right. It's he's not me. Telling him, yeah. yeah, he's like, you know, and yeah, man, it's just it's something else to see it. You know, in all these different forms, you know. Yeah. But the same kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's all. It's funny. It just came to me that the detective, in a sense, is almost like Alex Jones. He he, you know, he sees something. He's not going to agree, and then you. You, get a solution as far as knowing that it's good versus evil, right versus wrong, with uh, you know. Jesse saying, in a sense, that it, do you get the correlation I'm trying to make? The, yeah, yeah, yeah. That that uh, that he doesn't see exactly, and not to say Alex Jones doesn't see exactly, uh, but that the detective just has no idea what's going on. Yeah, has no clue. He won't whether he's playing a game or not. He has no idea what's going on in 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 Cruz's head. At all. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the spiritual battle of it there, yeah, it's like completely clueless to yeah. to that battle. Right. That right. warfare. Right. Right. Yeah, it's um it's definitely interesting. And uh you know, it's yeah, it's a shame. It's a shame that the what happened to Alex in this whole mm-hmm. case and I mean, at a certain point it's like if they're ch- now the judge is saying billion dollars he has to pay or whatever. Yeah, it's billion like billion and a half. <laughs> yeah, it's like at a certain point it's just like, are yeah. you guys, <laughs> are you guys joking? Like, what is what's the real? Like, why don't you guys just say, hey, we want to shut down Infowars? That's it. Because that's basically yeah, that's what, what it, you're trying yeah, to do. Yeah. And it's like, um, it's just amazing. It's amazing that that can even be a realistic, mm-hmm. like, ask yeah. or thing. Right. Right. Um, so. And uh, speaking of, you said, uh, just say you want to shut it down. I don't know if you know that the one of the lawyers for the the plaintiffs, he said that in court to the jury. Mm. Don't you? We want you to shut him down. You know, we don't want him to have this this platform to speak. So they they really they've said it aloud that that's what they really want to do. But I guess they have to guise it and dis- and disguise it, you know, as something. Monetary instead right. of uh, just flat out saying, "Be gone, Alex." You know, yeah. send you to to the the Huskal. Right. <laughs> well, hopefully, I mean, if he's smart, I mean, I don't know how much he can elongate it, or but I would assume that you could probably fight it to where he could go a long time without actually having to physically pay probably a huge even amount of it. Yeah, he <laughs> but, did say that. Profit, any profit goes to them. I guess they have a dollar amount set up to where the the his business that 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 whole Infowars thing makes whatever it is, X amount of dollars, and anything above that X amount of dollars, that's what he has to give to the family. It's amazing. Yeah, it, it really is. It really is. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I appreciate it. But yeah, man. Yes, sir. Great yeah. job. Thank I love you. the music. I love that. That was your song right there during the break? Oh, right. I'm glad you asked. So that song was uh, a collaboration I did with a buddy of mine named Carlos Rossi. Um, It's off his album, uh, The Pale Horse. I think that's the name of that album. Uh, We did a couple songs on there. That one was called Legion. And uh, yeah, so that was that. Uh, Check that out. It's 
I like it. That's one of my my late, latest collabs that I did that I I really do enjoy myself also. Nice. So, I like the yeah. non vaccination talk. Oh, I like cool. the <laughs> <laughs> right. I'm, right. I'm hearing some of the bars. Yeah. Thanks, man. <laughs> Thanks. Nice. From, a, from an artist to an artist. Yes, sir. <laughs> I appreciate it, though. Yes, sir. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So, again, that was Legion off of the Pale Horse uh, by Carlos Rossi. Um, that's been out. I think that came out, that album, he um, mid-year, maybe June of this year, 2022. Uh, nice album. Um Yeah, um, that to James, uh, to Hake, he just uh, texted me and said, put a line in that I said, uh, our situation, oh, no. That he, in the song, at towards the end, I say our situation is a tight one. That is actually from Notorious B.I.G. I don't know, it just came to me, that 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 line, and I just kept going with it. So that wasn't Tupac. Hey, that was Biggie. And I'm not a Biggie fan at all. Yeah, it was on the Notorious Thugs with Bone Thugs and Harmony. Exactly. You knew what it was. I know you did. Um, there's a super chat. Wait, one super. Uh, one more. Top of the. Okay, okay, go ahead. Hassan, could you read that for me, please? <laughs> All right, thank you. Keep the chats. Nice. Right on. All right, this is on D Live. Ah, okay. With a diamond from Marcus Jones Stinks. <laughs> That's crazy. And they say, get it off your chest and off your knee, boy. <laughs> right on, Marcus Jones Stinks. <laughs> and Marcus Jones Stinks. Uh, yeah, thanks for the super chat. Um, oh, okay, that's something else. Um, yeah, let me, uh, one other thing I did want to, I guess that doesn't, to give out, uh, I am on Twitter all, all, pretty much all the time, except the evening times, I tend to lay low, um. But uh, Twitter is B-I-G-G underscore B-U-M-P. I'm on Instagram at times. Same handle, B-I-G-G underscore B-U-M-P. I'm on, uh, and I think my Twitter is bomb. I just think I'm being shadow banned. <laughs> but whatever. I still make my points. I still say what I want to say, say how I want to say it, and... And leave it at that. I'm on Truth Social, uh, same thing. Big underscore bump, Gab, big underscore bump, two Gs. Mines, big underscore uh, bump. You can catch me, my music on SoundCloud, uh, big bump. I don't think the underscore is on that or even matters on that. And YouTube, um, big bump. Two G's, B I two G's. Um, if I didn't say, I did say Instagram. I do recall that. So, um, huh? So before, uh, hmm, Brian, let me make my point on the baseball issue. Brian, on line one, I see your call. I'm gonna go to you, but I want to make I want to make my point first. So, so CNN came up, uh, like I said, a week ago. Major League Baseball has a diversity problem. Experts say, experts, this year this year's World Series is proof. Of course. Of course, CNN would say that. 
Uh, it says uh, Dario Otero Jr., affectionately known as DJ, admires Jackie Robinson for making history as the first black American to play Major League Baseball. Uh, DJ's 13. Go figure. DJ 13 said Robinson proved black players too could excel in professional baseball, but 75 years after the league was desegregated, DJ said he is the only black baseball player on his youth travel team. So what? And that reality hits the hardest during tryouts and games, said DJ's father, Otero, Otero Sr. Whatever he does, however he's getting looked at, he sticks out like a sore thumb. He's known for being the one player in our area that is the black player. Boo-hoo. DJ, who lives in Rosemount, Minnesota, said he would love to see more black youth playing baseball in, the age, in his age group. Being the only black player on the team makes him feel worried for the future. Remember, this guy's, this little dude is 13. And he's not the only one. Recent news of there being, and Nick brought this up, like I said, last week or so. So I'm just, I, I've already, I've already, I've already been aware of what I'm going to talk about also. Um, there's no, no U.S. born black players competing in the 2022 World Series for the first time since 1950, uh, underscores what advocates for racial e equity in sports say in MLB's decade long struggle with diversity. Um, I don't know if I want to read all of that, but there are points in here they are making that that okay so I'll go here smaller percentage so this comes after a May report by Institute of Diversity and Ethics in Sport found that there is now a smaller percentage of black MLB players that than there's been in three decades black players currently compose about seven percent of MLB teams in comparison to 18 percent of black players the league had in 91 Ahead of game one in Houston this year, the Astros and Philadelphia Phillies announced their 26-man roster last week, and neither team's roster included any U.S.-born players. Excuse me. Astros outfielder uh, Michael Brantley, a black player likely, would have been on the roster but suffered a season-ending sh shoulder injury earlier in the season. Meanwhile, the Phillies had no players uh, on their opening day. Okay, so the why I'm bringing this up is they're they're making excuses or or they're crying about not a not a, not a not enough or not a lot of blacks playing baseball. Okay, it's a sport; it's not a big deal, but they're going to make it a big deal, and they're going to make it about race inequality um, they're going to make it about no opportunities it's baseball it doesn't take much to 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 find a league to play on they say um, it's an expensive sport I play baseball and I could have kept going with baseball I chose not to I stopped my freshman year I stopped because I knew I was a I could play football, and I was good at football. Um, I was good at baseball, too. I was on the All-Stars teams. Um, I was probably the only black in that area playing on the same team in the league. There were others. I didn't even know those guys. It wasn't a big deal to me. I just played. Um, I played catcher, um, and I was decent at it. Um, I don't. I don't recall any needing any amounts of money to keep playing. It wasn't about the money or, or how expensive it was to play. It was just I didn't want to play. I was starting to see myself as a better football player. And I probably, because of my size at the time, and I was way younger. I, I, I started high school a lot younger than generally most people. So I was younger playing. Um, that had I just went along with the baseball, I would have been 
probably my chances of being a professional baseball player would have been would have outweighed my chances of being a professional football player. Although I have played professionally football, professional football, not in the NFL, just an arena type league football. Um, but baseball, I could have easily uh, just with growth, growing, waiting until I was 18 uh, to actually play, to, to not actually play, to keep playing, and, and when hitting 18 to keep going and, and uh, growing into it, getting stronger and, and, and becoming more of a man or getting out of that, that little kid's body. Um, but so to keep going with this article specifically, it says it's an ex expensive sport um, that it's expensive. $300 gloves, why? $300 bats that you got to switch every single year. That's, I, I don't know who does that. I mean, professionals don't even do that unless they break their wooden bats. You don't break aluminum bats. That's rare. Um, uh, the father previously coached baseball in urban areas said the fields in black and brown communities are not maintained as well as fields in white suburban areas if you want to play hey, keep the, keep the fields up that's not difficult to do these are just excuses to say oh it's race based it's not as fun adding that a rock might fly up and hit a player in the face because of the field's abysmal state. Experts say more needs to be done to eliminate the racial barriers to baseball. Again, they make it about race. I think that more could be invested into those uh, leagues or those programs, and I think the municipalities across the country need to partner with MLB to make those programs as robust as they can be and really support our youth. They need a handout. Um, so I'll go down to, it says, it said, there's blame to be placed on every level. Lack of investment and high cost to play are not the only problems. Of course, guess what they're going to say next? Ebony Magazine, which is a black, uh, outlet used to promote and list all the black professional baseball players in the sixties and seventies, but they no longer do. There's blame to be placed on every level. Lap, um, says lap chick and black children maybe i missed the lap chick part children are less likely to choose baseball when they are not seeing themselves celebrated in the sport i don't know why that it's a phenomenon to me that blacks always comment on we oh i want to see uh somebody like me Oh, I want to see somebody like me do this. Oh, I like seeing us in this. That's so draining. I don't know how you guys live like that. I I don't, I don't. It, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. I get it, but it doesn't make sense. No one, no one gets it either. It's weird. It's weird. Uh, so they go on to say Barry Bonds was considered one of the most popular baseball players in the early 2000s, but his reported steroid use and the subsequent media critique um, overshadowed his accomplishments. This resulted in pushing black athletes away from baseball and more to, toward basketball and football. Okay. So if you're a young black kid and you see the best black baseball player being criticized all the time, rightly so, and you look at the NBA and see great athletes who are being highlighted on the news and in the community, same thing in NFL, you're probably not going to choose baseball. It's illegal to do steroids or have those in your system at any level, at any level as far as uh, the levels that they accept in baseball itself. So, right, like I said, rightfully so, Barry Bonds was under attack for what he did, or what he was tested positive for, let me say that. Then they, they talk about the NBA and the NFL. Um, there's very, very, very high crime statistics involved with NBA players and NFL players. There's no doubt about that. No doubt whatsoever. Um, 
And so to say they're glorifying NBA players, that's why the kids gravitate to that. Yeah, because that's how the culture is running. Despite the racial equi uh, disparity in baseball, the young DJ said he hopes to make it to MLB someday as a starting pitcher. I've got a big arm and an arm that someday might be part of the next generation of major league superstars. As long as you work at it, keep going. This guy, little man, should not have an issue making it to, to the major leagues. If he's that good, his arm is that big, he has so many pitches, then he should be able to make it. And maybe pitching is not his thing either. He may need to be on the outfield or first base or second or third shortstop. But he's going to just stick to pitching. If that's what he does, he does it. But my point through this whole CNN saying that it's a, div a diversity problem is the problem really, really stems from the civil rights movement. So... Um, so from the Society for American Baseball Research, they did a, they do research for, you know, through all type of things, demographics of uh, the demographics for the players that he's presented, all type of, all type of um, uh, stats and things like that. So, um, could you pull that up for me, Hassan? The their statistics, the the percentages. So they 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 worked on um, or just it says baseball demographics from forty seven to sixteen. Uh, so I'll I'll get into it. So. What, what I, I noticed some years ago, this came across me. I can't recall how, how I was into this specifically, but after Jackie Robinson's debut, uh, the, the numbers of, of black players rose significantly. Uh, 47 was the inception, was uh, the bringing on of um, Jackie Robinson and a few other players, like right after, um, immediately. After, you know, 47 was the year um, that he came in. 49, it almost doubled the amount of uh, black players in the, in the MLB. And it grew significantly. By 64, it was, there were 11 point from, in 49, there are 1.5% of black players in baseball. You have like a 40-man team. I don't know how many at that moment uh, baseball players there were um, or baseball teams there were. Say there were 20, so uh, maybe 30 to 40 players. So you may have had 600 to 700 players on each team or, or in, in the league at the time. Uh, on the roster. So that 1.5% grew to 11.7% in 64. All right, so if that's the case, then the numbers would, would rise because people are flocking to it, in a sense, form of reparations in, for baseball also, that they would Flock to baseball, pre-64, pre-civil pre rights, you know, the fathers in the home, uh, the marriage, uh, you know, people are doing for themselves. So the boys in that time, young men going, playing, uh, they go into baseball. You can see the number uh, continue to rise even during uh, – if I'm not mistaken, during the Vietnam War, numbers still rise. So they're rising. They go up. 
So these guys, 18, going into play Major League Baseball, starting 18 or 20. Baseball is, a, in a sense, a, it's non-contact, -con non-physical. It's not physical at all, other than you preparing. And so you, there's longevity in baseball. So that's 64. You give a guy 20-something years. My favorite baseball player is Pete Rose. He played 22, wait, no, I'm sorry. 63 to maybe 85, so that's 22 years. That's a long time to play a sport. Um, so from 64 at 22, you get 96, you're going to have a decent amount of black players. They're going to be there. They're going to be there. Um, but the point I want to make about that is, as I said, that the civil rights brought in the welfare queens. It brought in illegitimacy. It brought in out of wedlock birth itself. Well, I just said that. Um, and kicking the fathers out the homes. So, yeah, the players that are there, they're going to play if they're there. They're adults. They're playing 20 years 10, 15, 20 years, it's going to dwindle because you have this system that, or, yeah, I'll, I'll use the word system, that was created to kick out fathers, to uh, out of wedlock births. Those are the real numbers. The abortion rates, those are the numbers that'll, that'll make numbers decrease the 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 whites yeah they were decreasing because yeah there were better black players that were around okay fine but then they make the excuse for the latin countries they don't have much they they're playing with sticks half the time with bottle caps and I forgot there's a name for a bottle cap game they play with a just a broomstick. Um, that why, if it's too expensive, how are they doing? How are they becoming 20 to almost 30% of baseball? That that's not an excuse for um for not having blacks play baseball, that shouldn't be the excuse because they can do it. They're doing it. They're proving it. So these people, these, these kids from Venezuela, Cuba, Puerto Rico, Dominican Republic, they're coming, making the big dollars, playing. It seems to be that they, they see the opportunity and they just do it. Just what's wrong with just doing it? Don't make the excuse. Just do it. Just do it. They make the excuse of, like I said, the Barry Bonds. He was doing steroids. He did. He should be penalized if that's the case. And that's the way it goes. It's not about that. It's not about the race. It's not about the money. It's about that family, that, that father being in the home, that father being married to his wife, them having kids, that father there to be that head of his wife and for them to see that example and by seeing that example, they go out and do whatever they feel they want to do. If it's baseball, they play baseball. If, it, if they want to be a wife and stay home with the kids, they their wife staying home with the kids. If they want, uh, if the Someone wants to go to go be a pilot in the, their navy or whatever. Um, they they do it. They just do it. it. It just makes sense. So another point I want to make with that was baseball being similar to a a uh, a single a single man sport. Like just you're almost doing everything on your own. You don't really interact. You interact with the players on your team 
on the field, but you really don't interact with your players on the team. You know, you send signals or whatever. Uh, the batter's by himself. He's getting something from the coach. And that's another thing. You get it from the coach. You're not getting it from your teammates. You're getting uh, instructions from your coach. The pitcher is getting instructions from the coach, from the coach to the catcher to the pitcher. Yeah, he can make the decision on if he wants to throw that pitch or not. Now you're in the outfield. You're still getting instructions from the coach. The players don't tell you a play. Like in football, the quarterback's not telling you a play, and you're involved in that for that quick five to ten seconds of game play. So um, I was going with that with the single man sports. It's like blacks are more into the team thing, and it goes with the group thing. They can, they can, you know, function more, it seems. It just seems that way. In uh, basketball and football. Now, the other, the two that I'm, I'm realizing that it's a single sport, single man sp- sport, is tennis and golf. That's just something that where a black has excelled. And I don't want to say... Specifically in golf, I, I pick Tiger Woods as an example for golf. Even though he's not black, he is mixed, that his father was there. That goes for tennis with the Wilson sisters. Their father was there. It, from that, you need, you're going to need that structure, that example of perseverance, you know, being to practice on time, doing your stretching, your workouts, your your you know, running, whatever it is that you do, and you're in golf and in tennis to stay on top of your game, and it's tougher. It's it seems to be tougher for blacks to be involved in that unless there's a strong father figure. Not even fa- not I'm not gonna say father figure. A strong father that's there to lead the way there's no denying that that that's that's clear baseball um basketball and football that's a totally different story you can be you can live in a car by yourself a 12 year old come up go to high school being homeless and you can make it in in the nfl and the nba you can. You can. It doesn't, I mean, there's a long shot, but you can. And it's easier because of the team situation. Your father doesn't have to be around. It, over half of those players' fathers weren't around. I don't know the statistic for sure, but I'm just telling you, that's the case. And that's what I'm, I'm going to stick by. Their father's not around. There may be some anomalies. Father passed away. That's... That's how things go. But overall, their fathers aren't around. Um, So the civil rights movement, I'm going to go back to that. Yeah, boosted up the numbers. The numbers were boosted up. Segregation in baseball, the desegregation in baseball did allow numbers to grow, 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 grow. But it, the numbers seem to correlate to no fathers in the home. Numbers start to dwindle, start to dwindle. We know that with civil rights, welfare, queens, the um, kicking the fathers out, the, the birth, uh, the abortion, birth rate rates going down because of the abortion, and And they, the numbers almost flatline. I, I said that. I, that. That's the point I'm making. It's because of those factors. And the father is the key to it all. It, I have no doubt about it. To baseball, the fathers are the key because it's that synonymous with the single-person sport. You don't – you still – you can go out and play. Uh, you can do some baseball stuff, 
you know, by yourself. You do need the team to play or whatever, but you can you can do whatever you need to. You could run to be a faster uh, at running bases, stealing bases. You can just throw a ball over and over again. You don't need anyone there. But if you have someone there, it shows that that there's discipline, uh, there's structure. And if you're a, a decent player, you, it's possible you can make it. There's little farm leagues and all the way up to the big leagues where you can play baseball. You just have to show and prove. That's it. With any other sport also. So, um, so they, they make all these excuses about race, like I said, about uh, it being too expensive, and it's, that's just not the case. That's not the case at all. And, um, and it has nothing to do with racial uh, issue, no, nothing with inequality, no financial reason, and it's not at all systematic. It's just systematic or systemic. It's not. It's, again, civil rights and fathers not being around in baseball for kid for blacks specifically having low numbers in in the major league baseball. And that's that. That that's my point that I want to make. So, it, yeah. The numbers are going to be what they are because of civil rights movement. Um, if you don't believe me, you can debate me right now. 888 <laughs> 888-775-3773 is the number. Um, before I get to a super chat, there's a caller on the line, and you guys feel free to call in. Brian from North Carolina. How are you doing, Brian? I'm doing well, Big Bump. How are you doing? Hey, I'm well as well. Um, nice. What's on your mind, man? I see you want to talk about what I just was talking about. I did, yeah. yeah. Unfortunately, sorry to ruin it for you. We're not going to debate. Because <laughs> uh, <laughs> I agree with you. Okay. Uh, I played baseball as a kid as well. Uh -huh. And uh, very similar to like what that kid said, it wasn't a lot of black kids, but... I just, I wonder, uh, well, let me just say, you made a bunch of good points. Cool. Um, and then I think something else to remember, though, is, like, before blacks got integrated into Major League Baseball, the Negro League was doing amazing. Why couldn't that just be the case? You know, why can't they, they could have just kept the Negro League and made it right. dual leagues. Gotcha. Go it's, ahead. It's, it's almost like the HBCUs, how they were doing so yeah. well, and then. Yeah, exactly. They want to, yeah. yeah. They want to integrate with the. Uh, so I think that's that's an interesting point. And then um, the other thing was like, who decided that the MLB had a problem? Right. Um, that was another thing I had, that came across my mind last night, and I meant to look into that to see what that issue was. Why? Why was this? Why were they so adamant about having, while in, integrating into the MLB, having blacks? Yeah being involved it's just, go ahead go ahead sorry i didn't mean to cut you no, it no just worries. reminds me it reminds me of um the civil rights movement and everything where all of a sudden now somebody just decided that there was a problem when there was no problem right, right. and and uh i feel like organizations like cnn they they just like go around starting fires but not like real fires yeah it's just like fires to like stir up yeah. attention like uh you know how halloween that people used to like take dumps in bags and set them on fire. Oh, yeah. And then you yeah. open your door and you're like, oh, my God, it's a fire. <laughs> and the next thing you know, you try to do something about it. Yeah, yeah. It's like they're going around doing the same thing. Yeah, that that's that's a good analogy. And that they're, they're just stirring up stuff or just going out on Halloween, throwing eggs at your house yeah. or TPing your, your, your house or your tree that's in front of your house. Um, yeah. No, and then uh, another point that you talked about, you mentioned Barry Bonds. I think it's – I think it's uh, Amazing how like Barry Bonds was this like big hero for black people, yeah. Especially, and then as soon as he got found out to be doing steroids, all of a sudden they hate him. Yeah, right. But <laughs> people forget like what he did before he even ever touched the steroid. That he still was making hitting these balls. 
bad. He's yeah, like, he auntie has been that guy. Yeah, right, right, yeah. <laughs> and I had a, uh, an issue with that, too, at one point. I was like, I don't, Barry Bonds, get him out of here. You know, I was, yep. I was like, I don't want to hear that. <laughs> but, yeah, I. and he was slimmer, too, a lot slimmer. He was maybe 190 pounds at his 6'3". I think he's like 6'2", 6'3", maybe taller. But uh, he was yeah. a lot a lot thinner, but he still would hit the ball. Um, so I, you're right. He was still that that home that run guy. player. Yeah, he was that guy. Um, I think I, I got one more point, and I know you got super chats. I'm going to get off the phone. But the other point that you made that I want to say something about was that uh, it's about the individualism of like base, baseball and golf and things like that. Yeah. I think it's interesting how – uh, those two sports are the sports that are really non-contact. Really, they're non-violent, if you will. That that's a good and, point. And, yeah, and they're and they're also two sports that don't require you to try to make sense of chaos. They're actually sports <laughs> that require you to be in stillness and True. and to know and to go. True. Yeah, I I get that. You're you're right about that. I didn't think of that point. That didn't come to me. So, I, but that's a good one. That's a good point. Brian, are you black? I am. You are. Okay. Yeah, just curious. Uh, someone asked. Uh, as the ace of spades. As the ace of spades. Oh, all right. Nah, I'm not just kidding. I'm not that black. No. <laughs> <laughs> I could be confused. All right. <laughs> hey, so uh, <laughs> Nick's laughing at you or at us. <laughs> so uh, he did mention, Nick did mention that. And I, in a, in the, from a report from CNN in May that the Institute for a for diversity and ethics in sports found that there is now a smaller percentage of black players. So I guess that institute, oh, so an institute. Figure, yeah, some made up group of experts probably you know, oh, made an issue to be like, Oh, uh, who hired them to do this research? Right. That, 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 <laughs> that would be the next thing. Yeah. Who funded it? <laughs> it's amazing. No comment. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that's amazing. It really don't matter though, man. Right. And I think that uh I think that um if anything black people have a problem with baseball because they're missing out, man. Baseball is America's pastime. Right. Right. And it's just an amazing sport to surround yourself around. Yeah. Yeah, I'm period, I think. I'm starting to appreciate it more. Uh and I I loved the game of baseball when I was little. I would remember, um, like, the All-Star game, being all, like, into it, into it, like, way too into it. But it was just, at the time, being young, I just liked it that much that I was, like, All-Star game, you would name the players, and I'm yelling and screaming in the house. <laughs> they can't hear anything I'm saying, but I'm yelling and screaming. Uh, no. So, yeah, but I Are get you, Have you ever played golf? A few times, a couple times. I like it. It's fun. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I play a lot of golf now. Do you? Yeah, I have a buddy that plays a few a few that play that I work with, they play all the time. I just don't have time to do yeah. it. I can't even get in the studio, so um I don't have time well, to do it. Well that's good that's a good thing, man. Yeah. That's a good thing. <laughs> well, all right, Brian, good to hear you. Good to hear you. Uh thanks for your call is what I was trying to get at. But, yeah, for yeah, sure. I appreciate it, man. Thanks for the feedback. Thanks, Bob. Take right. care. You as well. Um before I go to the lines again, there was a, I don't know my password, a, what is this, is this another super chat, oh, no, 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 I'm sorry guys, so, oh, it was, Streamlab from Animus, take off your cap please, only for a second. Well, Animus, my, 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 my hair hasn't been cut. The person I usually let cut my hair, he's been real, real busy. So um, next time. Thanks for this uh, super chat. <laughs> uh, nor is our Kansas. <laughs> uh, great show today. Hate got a beta back and big bump. He black. Facts. Um, yeah, I seen Hake a couple of weeks ago, and <laughs> it was pretty funny. 
but thank you for the super chat, No Rose Arkansas. Yeah, hopefully Hake will be back soon. Um, but again, thanks Hake for having me in mind to to host the show or fill in for you, guest host the show rather. So thanks for the super chat, guys. Um, oh, Hassan, I'm seeing that you have super chats. I think you just read them. Okay. All right. I think those are the two that um, that I had ready to go. Okay. All right. Well, I should have. It doesn't matter. No, it's fine. They're done. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Be right. black. <laughs> All right. So I'm gonna go. <laughs> I'm gonna go to the phone lines and Cassandra from Arizona. You are on the air with Big Bump. How are you? Hello, Hello Cassandra. I can barely hear you, but I can hear you. Speak with your um, chest. Let me hear you. Uh, is this loud enough? No. A little bit louder. Or put your mouth to the phone a little closer. Sorry. Uh, That's better. That's I better. Don't. You're good. Okay. You're fine. What's on your mind? Um, I wanted to add to the baseball talk. Is this Cassandra? Have I met met you before? Yeah. I did. Oh, okay. Good to hear from you. It's been a while. It's been a couple of years, huh? Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're a cool girl. Right on. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead with the baseball question or the comment. Um, I used to play baseball with my dad when I was younger. Mm-hmm. And we're actually and we were learning it in school a few weeks ago. Okay. And it's one of my favorite sports. Right on. Yeah. It's a cool sport. It, it It's challenging because it's hard. It's difficult to hit a baseball. Three, 30% is a great thing. 30% in anything is almost a failure. So continue. You think you're going to keep playing? Or at least yeah. it's not baseball, softball. It's all relative. Yeah. That's cool. Um, what else did you say? You said something else. And you said, oh, because your father. You played with your father and you were playing in school yeah, also? When, yeah, when I was younger, I played it a lot with my dad and my sister. Yeah. Yeah, that's typical. That's that's typical. I do. I, I have a memory of like one of the first times playing baseball with my father. So, um, yeah, that's that's cool. Yeah, baseball is a cool sport for sure. Anything else? Uh, I just wanted to say hi. Ask how are you doing? Yeah, hi, and I'm doing well. Um, good to hear from you. Like I said, it's been a while, but uh, um, thanks for asking. I appreciate it. Hope to see you soon. Maybe one day. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Bye. Bye. Have a good one. You too. Thank you. Hey, Nick, some people are just built to play sports. That's all. That's just a chat from uh, Nick. Some have it, some don't. <laughs> hey, uh, before we go, uh, call in 888-775-3773. I appreciate the people that have called already. Um, that was cool uh, to speak to you guys. Um I wish I could read the – I'm not polished enough to read the uh, YouTube chat. So hello out there to everyone that I um, – man, they put me on the spot. I don't have anything new to rap. Um, nah, I can't do that right now. Uh, <laughs> but, yeah, so – let me get to let me see one more thing before I have a have a quick uh, something else um, so is it all right let me let me check YouTube real quick in the chat Oh, okay. Jay. Okay, from YouTube. Jay asks, 
What made you want to hose? Host. Oh. <laughs> H-O-S. Host. Uh, I was, I, I don't know. I was asked. Hake presented it to me. So I took the opportunity. Never done it before. Um, and I wanted to do it. So that's the reason it was brought up to me. And I took the opportunity and ran with it. Um, yeah, I saw MLB half anchor babies, basically. I, that's why I don't know why Nick never played baseball. He would have just made it off that alone. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, <laughs> that's funny. Yeah, another uh, quick thing. I just I'm gonna just bring this up. Uh, my daughter texted me about it, but she went on another way. But I know Nick mentioned it earlier about the uh, in one of those Eastern Shore or uh, up in that New Hampshire area that the or someone brought it up that there's a a Miss America pageant that's affiliated with Miss America that trickles down or trickles up to Miss America that there was a a guy pretending to be a girl that actually won. It's so crazy. Yeah, Miss America pageant for the first time. A transgender model wins local Miss America pageant for the first time ever, ABC. That's crazy. That's insane. Yeah, teenager in New Hampshire has become the first transgender contest to win a local Miss America organization. Yeah, that's a Miss America organization, Beauty Pageant. And he looks like a whale. A whale. It's, it's like he just put a dress on, straighten his hair, put a, put a wig on or something. A mess. Fat. Whale. Look like Stacey Abrams or something. Um, but it, he's possessed. What can I say? Stacey Asians, because he's Asian. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then, uh, side note, since my daughter brought it up. Um, oh, I just brought that up. Kind of. Yeah, and I guess that's part of the, the accepting that, you know, is, I guess... If they're allowing drag queen story time and and these drag queen uh, performances, and they're allowing the children to be involved, the parents, this kid's gonna gonna be messed up. They're just screwed up a hundred percent. And um, but it's indicative again of the way America is going. Um, that's basically my time for today. I appreciate you guys. Um, I wanted to, I was asked, let me make sure I, I, so, uh, Fallen State, 12 o'clock today in the next hour, 12 o'clock Pacific. Um, stay tuned for that. Uh, Nick stream this evening for uh, Fallen State YouTube channel. Let me be specific, noon Pacific time. Uh, Nick stream today at 4 p.m. Pacific time. Church with Jesse. Uh, that's 11 o'clock Pacific time, Sunday. Rebuildingtheman.com slash forward slash church um and thank you guys i'm big bump i appreciate it james i appreciate it jesse um again big bump twitter true social instagram uh hit me up follow me like it you know and you guys have a great friday Peace.
been called a coon, but you gon' get this truth. They call me Info Tom, but you gon' get this truth. They say that I'm drifting, but you gon' get this truth. I'm still serving red pills. Take my last two. America first, what's your issue? This is that music, you can mag it too. You all in your feelings, boo hoo. Try me a river, then jump in it too. You in love with your melon, but where's your character? I'm daring you. Walk away from the plantation, slaying you. Say I'm self hating, but you want reparations. Destroyed by illegal immigration. If black lives matter, why you support abortion? And black on black crimes, not your focus. If I'm a grip, tell it to my wallet. A bunch of $3 bills, juicy smile it. See, you can agree or you cannot agree. But you gon' get this truth with no hypocrisy. Don't need your approval, just wanna be free. With that group, think you'll never see a jubilee. Go ahead, follow the lead, lead my own trail. But you do you, and I just wish you well. Divide and conquer, you fell for the one too. Cause MAGA ain't got no color, just red, white, and blue. But you gon' get this truth. They call me Uncle Tom, but you gon' get this truth. They say that I'm ripping.